Can we really terraform Mars? How are we going to get oxygen, water, plants, and the ecosystem in a desolate place like that? And how can we survive the cosmic radiation without any ozone layer and an atmosphere? Very good questions. So let's understand what Mars is like. Mars is a smaller planet. Its diameter is maybe half that of the Earth. Its gravity is about 38% of the Earth. So if somebody weighs 100 kilograms on Earth, they would weigh 38 kilograms on Mars. The atmosphere is basically one hundredth that of the Earth, uh, roughly. Yeah, Mars doesn't have a magnetic field, which means that there is there is no way to stop the cosmic rays and the solar wind from bombarding the planet. Which means that it would be a very hazardous play, place for uh, for humans to be in. It would basically expose you to a great deal of of solar and cosmic radiation, which is very detrimental to human life. Right. And yeah, there's the atmosphere is very tenuous compared to that of the Earth. There is no ozone layer, etc. So how do you terraform a planet like that? Firstly, let's understand that in order to terraform a planet, you need to be approximately a Kardashev type 1 civilization, which we are not. We are nowhere near being a Kardashev type 1 civilization. We are not able to terraform our own planet. We are not in control of the climate change. We are not able to stop that or prevent that. We are not able to stop the pollution of our oceans and so on and so forth. So we are not in control of what's happening on the planet, on our own home planet. Uh, it's an out of control reaction uh, uh, or process. So we are nowhere near being a Kardashev type 1 civilization. And in order to terraform a different planet, we would need that technological capability. So assuming hypothetically that in the future we start reaching that stage maybe 0 0.8 0 0.9 kardashev on, on the kardashev scale then how would we go about terraforming a planet like mars the first thing is we need to give it a good amount of atmosphere and uh, an atmosphere that's that's comparable to that of our planet here we want the right mix of gases as well we, we need oxygen first of all we also need a uh, gas like nitrogen so we need to uh, give Mars an atmosphere similar to that of the Earth. So it would have to be a hundred times uh, denser, uh, more, more, more voluminous than the atmosphere that we have in Mars right now. And we would need, see right now the temperature in Mars is about minus 60 or something degrees Celsius, which is too cold for, for life as we know it. it. Some kind of life can survive in that temperature. But it's not ideal for human beings. The average temperature on Earth is about, I don't know, 14, 20, something like that, degrees Celsius centigrade. So we want the temperature to go above zero at least. Yeah. So we need to bring about a, a number of changes there. We can't do anything about the gravity of the planet, which is about a third of what we have here. But we can change the other aspects and parameters of the planet. So one way of, of warming the planet is to uh, surround the planet with orbiting mirrors that would focus more of the solar uh, light and radiation on the surface of the planet. And that would heat up the planet considerably. And we can, depending on the number of mirrors and the and the surface area, total surface area of the, of the mirrors, we can basically, if we are able to achieve that technology, then we can possibly control and, and, the, and uh, determine what is the specific temperature we want to achieve on the planet. So that is one idea, orbiting mirrors around the planet, maybe a ring or several rings of mirrors or mirrors in a hemispherical shape or any such, or the best optimized shape to achieve the desired effect. So for that, we would need to build and create the technology. We still don't have the technology to do that. But hypothetically, theoretically, it's definitely possible. So that is one way to warm the planet. Warming the planet would basically reachieve um, the state of running water, because we know there's plenty of water on Mars. Below the surface, it's all frozen. There is a little bit of running water from time to time that, we, that is observed. And there's a great deal of water at the poles on the surface. So by warming the planet, you would make it a wet planet. And then you would do certain things to, uh, to create a gaseous atmosphere as well. So there are a number of tactics you can use. And then how do you get oxygen water plants? You would need certain kinds of chemical reactions. There's a lot of carbon dioxide on Mars. If you grow plants there, they would release oxygen. And over the long term, over the long run, maybe 
you would be able to produce oxygen there. That's one idea. The problem, one of the problems is that the soil of Mars is reasonably toxic. It contains certain perchlorates and other chemicals that are not, that are toxic to life, even uh, plant life. So that is another problem that we would have to overcome. So there's a lot of challenges right now that we have. We would have to address each of these issues one by one. And only when all these issues are addressed will be will we be able to terraform the planet and make it live livable for humanity in the long run. In some in some ways, we can make it similar to Earth. So this is all in the realm of science fiction today. We don't have anything near the technology as of today. We can't even reach Mars as, as of as of today. Maybe in a decade's time or so. We do have the technology now to send people there, but we need to be able to send them and bring them back safely. Right now, there's a reasonable amount of risk involved. So this is all in the future, maybe a hundred years from today or or approximately, something like that. But it is possible. It's definitely possible. A number of challenges need to be overcome, but these are potentially problems that we can actually solve as, the te- as our technological capabilities evolve and as we come closer to the status of a type 1 civilization.